Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with one of the great mysteries in a box in the entire realm of classical recordings. It's this. Pavo Yarvi's complete Telarc recordings, not on Telarc particularly. It's kind of on Telarc. I don't know how to describe this. It's on this thing called NCA, whence it must have been licensed, and it's 16 CDs, and it's absolutely marvelous stuff. It really is. But where do you find it? For example, if you look under Complete Telarc Parvo Yarvi in Amazon, you won't find it. But if you go to Google and put in Yarvi Telarc Complete and click on the link that says it's on Amazon, lo and behold, it pops up here under V period, C period, Telarc something or other. I have no idea. And there are 10 of them. And it only costs $51.90. And that is an incredible deal. I don't see it on Presto. Maybe it's the same thing. The title's different. You can find it here and there. But find it do if you don't have these recordings because they're really great. And as usual, we're going to go through the entire box and we'll look at what they are. And I just am shocked by this. It's also something of a cautionary tale because Pavel Yarvi has been around now for you know, a couple of decades and he's made a lot of recordings. And he made these for Telarc, which were sensational. And then he did his Beethoven cycle, which was on RCA. And, and he's done a lot on RCA since. But the Beethoven and the other stuff has not been distributed in the United States. I don't know what the story is with the rest of it internationally. Nobody seems to be paying attention. Nobody seems to particularly care. He did a couple things on Pentatone. What, what is going on? He, he's bouncing from label to label. He's a wonderful conductor. Don't get me wrong. He made terrific Sibelius recordings on, on Virgin. Remember them? <clears throat> I don't get it. I don't get it. It's, it, it is a, a, a iconic moment in the modern history of classical recordings where everything is just totally random and chaotic. It's so weird. The one constant in his career so far, I think, has been this series of Telarc recordings, which came out just as SACDs were coming out, and some of them were issued in both formats. I was never a fan of the, the four-channel versions. I liked normal stereo, particularly with these recordings. And then Telarc went bust, and Yarvi went elsewhere, and <sighs> I don't know. Anyway, this is a terrific box. Let's just go through what's in it, and I think the quality of the contents will speak for itself. First, it's a nice looking box. It comes out like this. It, as usual, is about twice the size that you need for the number of CDs that are contained therein. But you get a really, really nice little booklet right here with like stuff in like zillions of languages. It's serious. It's, I mean, it's a serious production. And all the CDs are original jacket productions, which is also quite nice. I'm really surprised. <laughs> I mean, I just don't understand what this is. And 16 really good Telarc discs for 50 bucks? I mean, are you kidding me? That's $3 a CD, a little teeny bit more. Huh? So let's let's just go through it and remind ourselves what he did. First, Berlioz Symphony Fantastique with the love scene from Romeo and Juliet. These are, I really ought to just say these are excellent performances unless I indicate otherwise. If you want to read actual full-length reviews of almost all of this stuff, go to classicstoday.com and just run a conductor search under Pavo Yarvi, and all of this stuff will come up. I think we reviewed everything. I reviewed most of it. So I, I've talked about it, I've heard it, and, and it's there. Sometimes there are double recordings because we did both the SACD and the CD versions when they were issued in dual formats back in the day. So uh, this stuff is very well covered and very well known, and it's a very good Symphony Fantastique. Then we get, ah, some of these these discs were so intelligently coupled. 
Here's a case in point. Sibelius II and Tubin V, one of his, his really great symphonies, the fifth, it has, you know, dueling timpani, it's marvelous. But the Sibelius II is a very good performance, but it heats up as it goes. First movement's a little logy, the rest of it is much better, but the Tubin is terrific. And putting a very, very well-known symphony with a no less worthy, but all but unknown symphony on a major American label with an American orchestra, that took balls. And it paid off because they're really, really fine performances of the, particularly of the unusual works. So this was this was a great disco. It was very, very exciting when it came out because we thought, oh, finally, Tubin's getting some press. Well, then tell our tanked and, well, you know, you know what happened. We tried. We tried, folks. We tried. And, of course, Pavel Yarvi went on to record the complete Sibelius symphonies on RCA in, in an orchestra, with an orchestra in France. And it's not a very good Sibelius cycle. Not at all. What a pity. This second is much better. Then this fantastic Stravinsky disc, which has Petrushka, the Firebird Suite, and the Scherzo a la Russe, with the Cincinnati Symphony in particularly fine fettle for this particular outing. It was marvelous. That's one of the great Petrushkas. It really is. Uh, let's see. What's this one? Ah, the complete all three Prokofiev, Romeo, and Juliet suites. Another first-class CD with as much Romeo and Juliet music as you could possibly squish onto a single compact disc. It's absolutely first rate. It's one of my one of my choices in that repertoire for the suites because you get all three of them and it's really they're really very well performed. Then we've got a Ravel disc that has suite number two from Daphnis and Chloe, the Pavan for a Dead Princess, La Valls, Mother Goose, and Bolero. I just want to make sure if I got this straight here. Mother Goose. Yes, the Mother Goose is the sweet. It is not the complete ballet. I really, uh, it's good. Is it fabulous? I mean, is it like the ultimate in Ravelness? No. You, you can get better Ravelocity elsewhere. And I've talked about all these pieces and things on numerous occasions already. But again, you can go read the review if you're curious. That's not one of my top picks. Next, oh yes, this is another wonderful coupling. The Rite of Spring and Nielsen Five, a fantastically creative coupling because both pieces deal with primal forces of destruction, you might want to call it, but in their own way, in their own unique way. And for that reason, they make very, very good disc mates. The Rite of Spring is smashing. It really heats up in part two. And the Nielsen Five is a terrific performance as well. No one talks about it. No one remembers it. But it's first class. There's no question about it. This is a really smart, interesting coupling. I really, really was it's exciting to see this kind of smart and interesting programming done at such a high level. That's what made these discs so exciting. Since then, Yarvi's become sort of, you know, like just another conductor, I think. But boy, this stuff is when he was he was really hitting it when he was younger. All right, here's the WC one. This is like the history of sort of late romantic music on disc. Every single one of these is is late romantic, early 20th century, or or mid 20th century tonal. It's it's the big romantic blockbuster repertoire, really done well. So you get the afternoon of a fall and the nocturnes La Mer and the Berceuse Héroïque. His DBC is better than his Ravel. This is very, very good DBC. Classy, really well played, nice and transparent, extremely well recorded. Can't go wrong. Nope. And now, what's this one? Oh, another wonderful coupling. Dvorak, New World Symphony. It's a very good New World Symphony, but there are a million very good New World Symphonies. So why not put it with Martin New Symphony Number no. 2? How many of those are there as singleton performances outside of Martin New Cycles? And the Martin New Second is such a beautiful work, and it's beautifully performed here. Another wonderful, smart coupling. Absolutely great. A disc which is more than the sum of its parts. And, you know, if you're going to do another new world, yeah, do something that's incredibly attractive, relatively unknown, but that will really justify purchasing the disc. I mean, it's such a smart idea. Why don't more people do it? I don't know. Oh, yeah. CD9. Bartok and Ludoslavsky, Concertos for Orchestra. Now, the reference recording in these two pieces, if you put them together, is Dohnani in Cleveland. That is 
I think, non pari. But this runs at a close second. It really does. Both performances are first class, virtuosic playing by the orchestra, extremely sensitive conducting. The Ludoslavsky, which has been recorded a million times, but often comes off as a little bit, I think, flat. Is it really it really lives here? It's, it's a vibrant performance, and it really benefits from the superb Telarc sonics. Great, absolutely great. Then we get Britain, Britain and Elgar, the Enigma Variations, the Four C Interludes from Peter Grimes, and the Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. What am I going to say about this stuff? It's great. Nothing not to like. Very well done. Almost everybody does it well. No reason to like, you know, wax rhapsodic because everyone has their favorite enigma. But I will say one thing. The Young Person's Guide is really, really smashingly done. It's a superb Young Person's Guide. And there, that's another piece that everybody takes out all the time. And a lot of people don't do terribly well. But Yarvi does. Then we have Rachmaninoff, Symphony Number no. 2, the dances from Aleko, and the scherzo, the early scherzo, a very fine Rachmaninoff second. Ever again, everyone has their favorites. Everyone's going to pick one that they love from, you know, the dawn of time on forward. Mine is the old Demir Khanoff Royal Philharmonic. Is this one as good? Ah, what can I tell you? It's just really good. And you get to a certain level and comparisons just become invidious. There's no point in making them. Keep your favorites. You like your favorites. You're not going to hate this one. And that's the point, I think, as far as the box goes. Then we get the Tchaikovsky Potatique and Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet is better than the Potatique. I don't think this Tchaikovsky 6 is one of the great performances in the box. It could have, I think, a little more, a little more spontaneity, a little more passion at the climaxes. It's neat and well done, but you know, you want more in Tchaikovsky. Let's not kid ourselves. It's got to have more, more hysteria and balls. Then we get this Prokofiev Lieutenant Kije in, in Symphony Number no. Five. Oh yeah, another Prokofiev Fifth. It's a might have been. This for me is the low point in the entire box. The Prokofiev Fifth with the climax in the first movement that fizzles out as it so often does. Don't know what happened here. They just were not on for it. Why can't people get this symphony right? I just find it astonishing that a symphony that has so much color and impact is so often played so badly. I mean, my God, I, I, it's, 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 it's mind boggling. It really is. I have no answer for it. None at all. Then we get, oh, this is very good. Masorti pictures it at exhibition, uh, Night on Bald Mountain and the Prelude to Chovanstina, the sort of Obligatory Mussorgsky disc. Really, really good pictures. Very virtuosic playing by the orchestra. Of course, Telarc even has other pictures, you know, including including the Mazel, you know, the Mazel Cleveland one, which was one of the early digital showpiece, you know, astonishing, fabulous uh, digital digital blockbuster things, and it still sounds great. I don't even think this one sounds quite as good as that one did, but it's very good performance. I mean, there's nothing to complain about. And we have two left here. Oh, yeah. Shostakovich 10. An absolutely first-class performance, except that the second movement, you know, the Stalin, ah, 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 you know, evil run amok movement, it needs it needs to be faster and, and sharper. It's Everything else is very well played. The finale goes really well. The first movement is perfectly paced. But so often in this symphony, that second movement is the killer. It's the shortest movement. It's only three and a bit minutes, four minutes. But I just want more savagery than they give. I am sorry. I, I grew up with Anne Sherrill and the Czech Philharmonic, which still has yet to be equaled. But you also get this Veo Tormis Overture number no. 2, which is 11 very attractive minutes of serious orchestral meat and potatoes stuff. So again, another really wonderful and unusual coupling with something which is more, more uh, frequently heard. And finally, oh yes, the planets. And because they had like room to throw something else on it. They also put on Britain's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra again. That's in case you didn't want the Elgar Britain disc, which I can understand. I, you know, the Britain sort of goes just as well with the planets. They're both kind of concerto for orchestry type pieces. 
And this planet is a really good planet. One of the better ones. Absolutely one of the better ones. Another brilliantly played, very impactfully recorded disc. And with that, we have the entire 16-disc Yarvi Complete Telarc Recordings. Pavo Yarvi, that is. Really a first-class effort by, by a young conductor. I mean, if this is all he did, <laughs> and then, God forbid, he dropped dead, we would be saying, wow, what might have been? He was so talented. He was like Guido Cantelli. He was one of those guys who had so much promise. Well, now he's lived to fulfill that promise. And some of it, as with his Beethoven cycle, which is marvelous with the Deutsche Kammer Orchestra Bremen, you know, that thing, it's wonderful. And in other areas, he has not fulfilled his promise, mainly because he's been recording a lot of the same old stuff and it hasn't been well distributed or well promoted and it hasn't been brought to people's attention. I mean, he's doing Bruckner. Why? Why, oh why, oh why must he do that? You know what I mean? That's the problem. So where is Pavo Yarvi going? I don't know, but all I can tell you is if you know how to work your Google search correctly um, and you can grab that. I mean, last time I checked on Amazon, they had 10 of these suckers for $51.90. Um, and there are some available presumably on, on other other search engines and and source material places as well. I'm shocked shocked that this exists. I don't know how it came to be. I'm happy that it did. And it's quite a collection of stuff. I'm pretty sure you'll agree. So there you go, folks. Keep on listening. Enjoy Pavel Yarvi with the Cincinnati Symphony. It's one heck of a fine legacy. Enough said. <laughs>